All right, what we have here is a Carver C9 Sonic Hologram Generator. Very unique piece of kit by Mr. Bob Carver himself. Uh, what I've done is I've taken off the top that you can see down there. And all the screws and uh, three buttons. And now I've made this uh, circuit board. Um, loose and then of course you can see here the thing was I guess uh, manufactured 712 1984 so that would have been the year I was in uh, Germany selling this uh, Carver gear I was there from 82 to 84 on the uh, CFB LAR West Germany Canadian Forces Base LAR West Germany and we used to carry the full lineup of uh, Carver stuff. And here we go. This happens to be a single voltage, 120 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, 110 watts unit. But we also had um, dual voltage models that we sold over there. Very unique uh, item. Very... Um, uh, limited use to some folks because you need a you know a really good size room in order to do this uh, use this uh, piece of kit but it really really works well so uh, I invite you to go on to Bob Carver's uh, many of uh, Bob Carver's uh, interviews on YouTube um, one would be um, home audio geeks I guess it was called he has a good long hour-long interview where he explains uh, why this thing is so good at stereo imaging. And, if you, and it's probably the highest selling, what I, from what I hear, the highest selling Carver piece of equipment uh, he's ever sold. So it must be good. I've got a lot of uh, use out of uh, these units. I uh, just reacquired this one not too long ago. And what I'm doing is I've got a box here full of all the capacitors, transistors, and everything that are recommended for change out given the uh, the age of the age of the unit. So uh, what I'll be doing is uh, changing out all these capacitors, uh, many of them on the board here that you see. Won't be touching the ceramics. We'll be changing out the problematic uh, transistors. And uh, we'll see how, how much, if any, improvement will be made. Certainly it'll uh, increase the longevity of the unit by uh, replacing all the caps with new ones, given that these things are uh, well over 30 years old now. Um, so, here we go. We'll uh, do some recordings as I go through the process. We'll take the board out and uh, start removing all the uh, electrolytics. And uh, I also believe that uh, I ordered some of the uh, ICs as well. So we'll see how it goes. All right, there's the uh, the board that I just showed you, and you can see all of the uh, the various components that I've ordered here. And here are the op amp um, holders, so we uh, have to solder in. And then these are the op amps themselves. So you can see the uh, the part numbers and everything there. And part numbers there. These are 22 microfarad capacitors again from Mauser and we've got uh, one microfarad uh, 50 volt capacitors three of them these are uh, in place of the big capacitors they're the uh, 25 volt thousand microfarads you can see there and 50 volt 2.2 microfarads. So, let's proceed. Well, I'm going to say they didn't make this easy to come out. 
but uh, what I ended up doing is uh, disconnecting the, uh, the main board which you can see it's the only board as you see it's just a case and what I did was I taped the top uh, connectors so this connector goes there that connector goes to the same place and then the ones that don't have the tape go on the bottom and then we'll have it wired correctly and there you see the bottom side of the board top side of the board and here are your only three real controls the other thing is uh, they put this big god awful gob of uh, of this uh, rubber cement basically glue gun kind of shit stuff sorry for sorry for the language um, you can see it was really bunged up with all this uh, glue gun stuff here anyway that's uh, just basically holding the LED in place basically so as you can see there so we'll clean that up a bit and uh, then we'll start uh, knocking off this board so we've got all the, ca the big caps here you can see where they're uh, soldered on and then we'll uh, go through them individually and uh, look at the transistors and I believe the ICs we're going to be changing as well so uh, onward and upwards um, we'll do a progress review in a few moments and uh, then we'll reassemble it all all right, it's the next day, and uh, basically I've pulled this board, as you saw in the previous uh, clip, and now I've changed out all the components. So I did uh, all the caps yesterday, and put her down because it was getting late, and did all the uh, op amps this morning. So caps I changed out there, 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 basically all the can caps that you see there. Um, Not many of them, but there's there's enough. And I did measure up the other uh, ones that came out. Quite a few of them were out of tolerance, quite a, quite far out of tolerance. So I, I'm expecting good things here. Uh, this morning I did all of these op amps. Uh, probably the trickiest part because there's so many pins and uh, in close proximity of each other. Uh, the only things I have left to do now is to uh, reconnect the uh, the back of the, uh, the socket here which also ties the uh, transformer to the rest of the board so uh, the two ones with tape go on the top and the two ones without tape go on the bottom I've had to strip off uh, some wire from when I clipped them off previously and then the other thing I have to do is to get that LED back into that hole because it got bent up a little bit but uh, leads are good and what I'll do is I'll do that last and then uh, use a glue gun like they did before to uh, glue it in place so it doesn't uh, doesn't move so that being done we'll give her a sound check and uh, see how she works so there we are Carver sonic hologram generator model C9 and uh, pretty much done with except for the last uh, last bits of soldering and assembly all right I've got her hooked up now and uh, she's working great so uh, reconnected the uh, or put the LED in proper place did the uh, this was the piece of paper that was in it before, so they're showing the manufacturer's date. I just put a little marking on there saying I recapped and changed out uh, the op amps, 25th of November, 2018. Everything is working great, as expected. So the only thing is with a mono recording like this, you can't actually hear it. You have to actually be present. But trust me when I say, so we'll put on some tunes here. So this is bypassed. Right now I've got it, uh, the Carver Hologram C9 here um, on tape loop. So this is bypassed. Uh, no power button on this thing, which is unusual. 
but uh, I guess the expectation is you'd be using it all the time. So anyway, if I flip it up, you can actually hear a change. And you actually have to be sitting in the sweet spot to uh, notice it. So when you alter these various settings, bypassing or, or on, you can actually hear a difference. More so when you're sitting in the sweet spot over here. So there you have it. Another successful recap. Sorry it's so dark in here, but uh, no, really, uh, really interesting piece of kit. I, you know, you have to, uh, my room isn't ideally set up for it. It's uh, very reliant on uh, um, a specific way of setting up your speakers and uh, getting your speakers away from the wall to add to the spaciousness. I'll put a link in the uh, I'll put a link in the uh, explanation of this uh, YouTube posting and basically um, to Bob Carver himself explaining how this thing works and it's uh, a really interesting piece of technology. It doesn't work with every recording but uh, it uh, certainly is a welcome addition to uh, my man cave system downstairs. So uh, I just popped it up here just because it was easier to uh, plug in to test it out. So thank you for watching. Uh, it was an interesting project, really quick and easy to do, and uh, I'm happy with the outcome.